of things confuse me. Like, how do black holes work? Why are boxing rings called rings if they're square? Why do prank channels still exist? Elden Ring lore. Oh yeah, and most of all, the fact that in 2013, the Devil May Cry series was rebooted into the edgiest edgelord edgefest I have ever seen. This was a time when the days of were completely gone to make room for the cool kids version that feels like it was made in a society. You know, with sick things, you're gonna have to hide from your parents because you know, it's just so cool. I have absolute power. <laughs> the world is at last your bitch. As am I. No. Okay, no. For those of you who don't know, I have been going through the Devil May Cry series for the first time, and so far I've covered the first four games, and they have been a blast. Well, maybe less so you, my sweet summer child. But my point is, I had a ton of fun playing this game. It's not a bad game, so let's get that out of the way. But there's just so many intense changes to the story, it being a reboot and all, that after playing the previous games, it gave me whiplash. F you. F you. Let's just say it wasn't quite on my tempo. Devil May Cry really has an emphasis on style. It's wacky, it's fun. It doesn't really take itself too seriously. So when your style goes from wacky woohoo pizza man to edgy whatever alcoholic man, it uh, kind of blows, <laughs> at least for me. Now I know taste is subjective, but you'd be hard pressed to not be able to see the contrast between For an opportunity to battle a being of such grand delusion as you is a sweet, Fortune. And this eloquent dialogue replacing it. You primed it, you ugly sack of shit. Who the fuck are you? So yeah, I just want to talk about DMC Devil May Cry, which I don't know why it's called that. Maybe it stands for drastic major changes to Devil May Cry because that's basically what it is. Gamers, where's your motivation? It's time to wake up from this illusion you call a reboot. The masked lunatic you saw there belongs to the organization called the Keepers of Canon. Now, this group is taken to spreading the lie that we live in a parallel timeline, far worse than the one they come from. Yeah, one of the main villains of this game is actually Alex Jones if he were on Fox News. And on an unrelated note, if you want to feel uncomfortable, check out this Joker grin. Pathetic! Just like the Joker himself is pathetic. Does it make you uncomfortable? It, it makes me think that somebody's living in a society. But you can call me Dante the Demon Killer. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Ah, uh, yes. Dante. My name, by the way, is Dante. All right, I got it. Dante. Call me Dante. El Dante Rado. Dante. All right, listen, the best I can do is Dante with a no, because uh, this guy is a drastic change from what we had before. Who invited you, fat ass? But trust me, this guy's cool. The game told me so. I mean, I'd only been playing for like five minutes and he'd already had a one night stand with some strippers, drank 666 branded whiskey right as he woke up and then publicly exposed himself to strangers. <laughs> He's so cool, I wanna be just like him. Get your filthy fucking claw off my trailer. I mean, come on guys, he, he swears and goes commando the entire game. How much cooler can you really get? I don't know, I think the biggest thing that's holding this game back is what they did with the changes to the characters. For me at least, it feels like they're a bargain bin version of what they used to be. For example, let's go over Dante. He now consistently treats everyone around him like trash. I helped you back there. I didn't ask for your help. Seems like every word that comes out of his mouth just is trying to make him seem super edgy so he can be one of the cool kids. You guys do seem really nice, but uh, I'm more of a loner type. Trust issues, work alone, that kind of thing. Which just comes off feeling like he's trying way too hard and it gets annoying pretty fast. Just be careful. You can get rough in there. I like it rough. We went from this like goofy, lighthearted, half human, half demon hybrid that didn't even try to be cool and he ended up being a total badass to a super serious, edgy angel demon hybrid who says fuck and screams like this. Listen, it's a different take on the character. It's fine. They tried to take it in another direction, and I think that's totally good. It's no problem. Hmm? I'm a million years. All right, that's it. Let's fight. Oh, you, you, you did not just do that. Hold me back. 
hold me back. It just feels like the developers are trying to say, well, my Dante is so much better than that old loser Dante that was actually way cooler than me. And ironically, am I right, guys? Or am I right? Promise me, I'm cool, guys. I, I really am. I, I, I am cool. Please don't tell me I'm cool. The ironic thing is I actually think the design looks pretty good with the hair, but <laughs> hey, whatever. Dante, you look ridiculous. It seems our creators are at odds, brother. How could they turn us into such scum? Rewind a bit, who are you again? My name is Virgil. If you're expecting the man who drinks motivation smoothies filled with protein power so he can anime blast you away with a single scum, then I got bad news for you because uh, you're actually gonna get Virgin, the Redditor who believes he's superior to humans. They're like children. Thinks V for Vendetta stands for Virgil. Oh, and you know, loves to wear a fedora whenever he can. Yeah. Which the backlash for was so intense that they removed it in the definitive edition. <laughs> but you can't hide from me. I know you were wearing a fedora, Virgil. You can't, you can't cut that out from me. That was my selling point for this version. <laughs> He's also the kind of guy to give long-winded exposition dumps through graffiti lanes that perfectly depict every single thing he describes. A hybrid of angel and demon. The rebellion for Dante Yamato, for Virgil. And we're the offspring of angels and demons. Demon father, angel mother. I just love to imagine that Virgil spent months and months preparing all this art for the day he could explain all of this exposition that was told to us in the mission right here. Just like, finally, my masterpiece is now complete. Now no one will forget this devil's backstory. Then for some other returning characters, you got Mundus, who, you know, used to be this unknowable shape-shifting super demon who chilled in a church at the bottom of the demon world is... You know, now a generic bald banker threatening the president so he can control the world through debt. Who's trying to have a child with another demon named Lilith, who has uh, a flabby skin disease, making her look like the spokesperson for the dangers of plastic surgery. And finally, Sparta. Virgil and Dante's demon father used to be, you know, the dark knight of ultimate power everyone talked about. Is now, I guess, a middle-aged dad running from the demons because he fell in love with an angel and then got caught and is, you know, living in a BDSM nightmare forever now. He's never coming back. What the fuck is that? But enough about the characters and being negative, because, you know, even though this game does kind of feel like a bad Netflix and live action anime adaptation, there's a lot of good in this game. One of the biggest changes to the lore that is kind of interesting is Limbo. No, not that Limbo. No, not that one. We're, no, no, we're talking about the parallel world around us where demons exist. A world that's cranked its saturation and contrast settings to max, and uh, where you'll be spending the majority of the game killing demons. Usually in missions, you'll enter a little portal made with desiccated squirrel semen, wolf hair. Good stuff. Th the thing is, in this game, normal people can't see demons around them. The whole point is that the demons control the world through capitalism and Fox News. Not only that, but the world is also being controlled through the powers of demonic Mountain Dew. It'll kill you. I'm not even kidding. That's just the actual plot for this game. <laughs> but you know, the only way to fight back against these terrors is by dishing out your most sensational holy beatdowns from hell. Which brings us to the Cosmos. Which is actually pretty great. It's fluid, it feels nice, it makes you feel really powerful. Traversal is also really fun. Platforming is better than it's ever been, I think, in this game. And it's just really smooth, so there's a lot of fun to be had there for sure. I played through the game on the highest default difficulty available, and I was collecting S rankings like a kid on Halloween in a rich neighborhood. It's really easy, which is fun but it doesn't compare to the intricacies of the other games. Meaning that a lot of the skills required to perform combos uh, in the past are simplified in this one. Uh, they first off threw style skills in the trash, so you'll find no <laughs> here, sadly. Depending on the trigger you're holding, like left or right on the controller, you'll use either angelic or demonic weapons that you'll pick up throughout the game at fixed points, and you can mix and match their attacks with these. I mean, in just a few seconds, you can hold a monopoly on shurikens, use the power of spin jitsu, ask some demons a question, help them cosplay as Swiss cheese, spin them right round baby, and then sock them in the jaw. So, I mean, it is fun. At the end of the day, it's really satisfying to play. So, I mean, you gotta give props there. I just seem to drag on forever. Church. If you've seen this man, he's wanted for awful one-liners. If you do see him, do not approach him, as you might die of cringe. He's also a known sexual deviant. 
Let's go over the art and level design because there's a lot that stands out. Some missions are super creative and they look really nice. Like this upside down world with rain falling upwards is sick. Then others physically hurt me. My eyeballs did not enjoy looking at this. Please get me out of this place. My eyes hurt so bad. But there are a lot of good things to be found here in the level design. I think it's really cool in Limbo how a lot of the world like changes around you, how it's like crackling sometimes, the walls will break and shift, and I think that's cool. The intensity of the color choices in some areas were just a bit too much for me to stare at for long periods of time though. Don't get me wrong, for the most part, the levels are pretty great, but this godforsaken nightclub mission is gonna haunt my dreams. Playing this level felt like staring into a strobe light while hell itself was burrowing into my pupils. She's got 50 million subscribers on YouTube. Now I think it's time to talk about the thing that really makes each Devil May Cry game most memorable. The bosses. First up on the hit list of the Devil May Cry bargain bin crew is the demon that's running the Mountain Dew factory. To get to it though, you gotta fight through a subtle message that tells you soda's bad for you to find out that the demon that's spiking the soda is actually a succubus. Uh, from what I know from succubi, aren't they supposed to like, seduce people into having sex with them and then kill them through that. With that in mind, this is the succubus. Yeah! Succubus. Suck on this. But after killing it, uh, it leaves Danikin plenty of room to go after the next boss, which is located in Fox News' headquarters at the bottom of hell. The only way to get there is by strolling through that upside down world, dodging a, a laser getting blasted at him, and then platforming through the broadcast's opening graphics, which is pretty fun. I, I think that's a cool idea. Which brings us face to face with Senator Armstrong's evil twin. You know, the one who actually loves the media and internet and celebrity bullshit. Hey, Bob. Put a spin on this. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can all write it and we'll do it live! Now I gotta give credit where it's due. This fight looks crazy. The creative juices were definitely flowing here. Daniel fights for his life not to get canceled. He definitely had pedophile eyes. Rapidly spreading sexual disease of the unholy kind. But Dorito holds off those allegations long enough by bopping him on the jaw so that he can kill him with this one-liner. Breaking news, Bob. You're fired. Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. Speaking of which, you want to know what's more nasty than Miss Succubus <laughs> barks a lot the second? Mundus's child, who, you know, just happens to be a giant demon fetus monster that sucks its mother back into its belly button until you beat it up to the point that it spits her back out, all while the background gives me some serious motion sickness. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. Seriously, this had to have been probably the least enjoyable boss fight I think I've ever had just because of the setting and the background and so much that was going on on screen. I don't get motion sickness from games, but this this did it. I don't know why, but it was it was too much for my eyes to handle, I guess. Maybe there was something going on with me that day, but it, my head was hurting so bad. I'll let you both live if you do exactly as I say. And after Dan finishes beating up an unborn-ish child whose mother was using it as a Pokemon, he captures them so he can use them as a bargaining chip in a hostage exchange for Kat, the girl who's an expert in squirrel semen, who at this point in the game had been captured by Mundus. And before we get to the next boss, I want to talk about this hostage exchange. Now, I'm pretty sure that one of the main character traits that Virgil's had in the past <laughs> games is that he, he has a code of honor. This Virgil shoots an unborn child in the back, lets the mother realize that it's dead, and then shoots her in the head. The hell did you do that for? I had to. Improvements, people. Improvements. We're only going up. Everything's great. <laughs> now, in a world where we have seen multiple dimensions, demons, giant monsters, and all sorts of crazy stuff, by far the most unrealistic thing in this game is the fact that this girl is not shot in this shootout right here. There are so many bullets, she stands straight up, is just like, ah, what do I do? In this flat plane, there's nothing guarding her, and she stands there for a good solid amount of seconds, and she doesn't get lit up. So all of these guys either suck a ton, or she's got the plot armor of the gods, but probably both. Also, back up a second. 
How does Lilith, this demon lady, die from these bullets? Five seconds ago, she was tanking all of my swords, my gunshots, all that kind of jazz, but uh, two shots from Virgil, instant death, goodbye. I don't know, Virgil probably has a higher weapon skill than me, something like that, <laughs> because... We're just gonna ignore that, who cares? So yeah, after an unexplained parkour session where Dante gets the ability to freeze time so he can jump off their car that's flying in the air and get them through a bunch of debris, uh, Mundus retaliates to the death of his child by killing millions of people. So we're still the good guys. It's, it's all good, don't worry about it. You must break into the chamber and close the hell gate. Mundus is still weak from his last outburst. This is your chance to defeat him. So we get to Mundus by going through an Ocean's Eleven styled mission where Cat is explaining the mission to us as we just go through it and the world turns into like a chalkboard planning session. Dante, you will have to cross a sky bridge to get into the East Wing. It's a kind of interesting concept. I think it's kind of fun. And we also get to ride an elevator, which did you know, back in the days of the first elevators in Germany, boys would actually study for three years to become an elevator operator. Also, did you know that Elisha Otis designed the first modern elevator with a safety brake back in 1874. Also, did you know that elevator music first appeared in the 1920s to calm people down who had a fear of taking elevators? She was right. This is hell. Everyone loves elevator facts. Shut up, Dante. Like, did you know the longest anyone has been recorded to be stuck in an elevator is 41 hours? Did you know in 1985, the New York Marriott introduced the first smart elevator, which took passengers directly to their floor without stopping? Like, did you know the closed door button might actually not work when you push it? So anyway, you finally catch up to Mundus, so he tosses you out the window and uses his most powerful attack he can, uh, fondle. Not my nipples, leave my pecs alone. Which only gets interrupted by Virgil merging the human and the demon worlds in order to make Mundus vulnerable. And they toss him off a building so that he can become a giant monster. You're an asshole! <gasps> but it's fine, because with the power of brotherly love and friendship, they help Mundus find his inner black knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail before killing him pretty easily. We did it. <laughs> I did it. Then the world freaks out about demons through social media with hashtag demons trending. But you know, it turns out that the true demon was the racism in this Virgil's heart all along. I'm gonna say a racial slur. What did you just say? It's the way to get true power. Say it with me. Can't let you do this, Virgil. Here I go. No. That's right, the final boss battle of this game is with Virgil, who in the other games is the storm that is approaching. But here I'd say he kind of acts more like a rainstorm that is dissipating. It's not too late. Yes, it is. <laughs> God. Not that the fight's not hard or fun. I don't want him to redo this all over again. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what I want. <laughs> but it is a funny fight. If only you had your fedora right now, you could win. I'm sure of it. The only scum here is you. I have to put you out of your misery. Real Virgil wouldn't want to see you this way. Nathaniel stabs Virgil, bleaching his hair to what it should have been in the first place and shows mercy. You know, after impaling his brother. This multiverse sucks. I'm out. Who you are. You are Dante. Nah, still doesn't seem right. Can't really accept him as Dante. The guy never got impaled the whole game. 